My name is Anna Lewis. I'm Sustainable Labs Officer at the University of Bristol. I've been in this role getting on for four years now. Um, and my background just kind of fits the role really well. Um, I was a research technician here at the University of Bristol in our biomedical sciences department. Um, and then I decided I wanted to go into the environmental sustainability world. So I did a master's in climate change science and policy. Um, and this job kind of came up right at the end of my master's. It's a really unique job. I think there was only four of us in the UK when I started. There's now around seven of us, um, but we have a network of around 60 members, um, 20 of which of us are really active now. Um, that network's called the Laboratory Efficiency Action Network. And anybody can contact me um, if they want to be involved in that. So, I guess my role um, has various elements. When I first started, it was focusing around the low hanging fruit, things where we could save the most energy and the most carbon um, and the most money as well. So some of the first things I did was equipment replacements, things like um, cold storage, so ultra low temperature freezers, um, drying cabinets. Um, I remember the first day in the job, actually, I was at a sustainable labs conference um, and I heard about various companies and um, Cool Ed was one of them um, and me and a couple of my colleagues across the UK were kind of doing various kind of tests with Cool Ed back in the day. So that was getting on for four years ago. Other things we do, so um, waste management, um, a big thing, obviously lab waste and lab plastics. Um, it's very difficult to, to get single-use plastics because they're contaminated biologically or chemically. Um, and we haven't quite figured out a way um, nationally and globally in which we can kind of really get to zero single-use uh, waste in that regard. And saying that, there are things that people can do. You know, you can kind of work on and clean your pipettes and reuse them. Um, you can use glass versions. Um, and there are starting um, nowadays, there's some infrastructure that's coming out that um, can sterilize pet tips and things like that as well. Um, there's also lab management, so making it more efficient, you know, inventory systems, chemical inventory systems, making sure that we're purchasing more sensibly. Um, and then, of course, energy management in a larger sense, so that's getting our labs and our lab buildings as efficient as possible. So that can be from, you know, building fabric, um, to our air handling systems and things like that, as well as our plug load and our lab equipment. For me, it's an absolute no-brainer. Um, I mean, LEDs in general, um, they last around kind of 50,000 to 100,000 hours, whereas a fluorescent bulb, or I mean a metal halide bulb in microscopes, uses nowhere near that, kind of 10, 20 percent of that. Mercury, from an environmental sustainability perspective, is obviously hugely toxic, and it's not something that we want to be purchasing and bringing into a university. We want to be getting it out of a university, and we've done that, you know, with an amnesty with our thermometers. Um, so there's no reason that we should be bringing in, bringing in bulbs, and there's also an associated cost with disposing of mercury because it is so toxic. From an energy perspective, again, um, I mean, I just mentioned that the bulbs last a lot longer, but they also, LEDs use, I think, roughly about 10% um, of the amount of energy um, that uh, a mercury bulb would use. Um, but, I mean, there's, there's costs associated with both of those things. And those are within my remit, the sustainability remit, which is energy, waste, and water. There are huge cost savings um, from purchasing of the bulbs because, as I said, the running time is so long with LEDs, you, you have to purchase less bulbs, so you more than make up for you know, that, that smaller upfront cost of the LED than the mercury over a period of time. Also, you know, the maintenance um, of replacing those bulbs and you know, looking through university purchasing um, uh, platforms to, to purchase them and staff time, the savings there. Um, from a research perspective also, um, and this was the main feedback that I've had um, from the academic community, it's the 20 minutes warm-up time that you're saving 
LEDs, it's on and off, um, which is you know, what we expect. And long term, mercury bulbs kind of fade out towards end of life, which means it'll have an impact on, on research quality at the end of the day because you, know, you get used to it. It's like if you have a dimming light at home, you don't notice until you kind of trying to find your reading glasses and, and then you realize it's because your lights are kind of going out. One of the first things is feature a state's department. If you don't already um, know that you have a sustainable or green labs initiative, find out if you do. Um, if you don't have one, just take into account, um, you know, certain things that you might not when you're purchasing. So, how frequently are you going to have to replace this? Um, how much is it going to cost to dispose of this? Does somebody else in the university already have this, or are there spares? You know, university culture, quite often we hoard equipment, hoard consumables, you know, we're very protective of our office space and our lab space. Um, so it's working with your technical teams and your central school teams. Just ask them, you know, can you, are there any systems where I can do a shout out and ask if someone's already got this? Or if you have some spare, you know, say I've got these, I don't need them anymore. Um, I'm going to LED. Um, but yeah, just take into account whole life costs. I mean, with lab equipment, quite often um, an efficient version might cost I know, 200, 300, up to a grand more. But the energy savings, um, you know, that could pay back in a year or two years. So even if you don't have a sustainable labs initiative, contact your estates team because somebody's purchasing the energy. Um, and say, I'm going to, you know, if you could, you know, give me a grant, a green grant, um, of the difference of an efficient model with an inefficient model, um, then you'll make more savings than that, but, you know, two plus years. So communicate more with your technical teams, your estates teams, um, make sensible purchasing decisions, and collaborate more with your, your fellow academics.